Y'all planning for this? Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Reading Time with Jarvis. Normally in this episode, I highlight other books and resources that I have read that have made an impact on my practice. But today I want to highlight for you my own book, Deliver Massive Value. And actually what I want to do is play for you a snippet or two from my audio book, the sections that have had the biggest impact on my practice. Now, obviously, they've all had an impact on my practice or they would not have made it to the audiobook. But I wanted to give you a taste of the audiobook so that hopefully and most importantly, you can take these lessons that have had such an impact on my practice and implement them in your own practice. Because as always, it is only the things that you implement, only the action you take that counts. Enjoy. Chapter three, fire pitas and other clients bringing down your bottom line. Early in my career, I incorrectly believed that anyone willing to pay me was a client. I was so desperate to grow revenue that it was easy to accept the idea that all new revenue was good revenue. What I didn't understand then, and many advisors still don't understand, is that these people are not clients, but rather saboteurs who are doing everything they can to keep you from achieving success. Frankly, I don't care why these people abuse you. All I care about is that you understand that these people are sabotaging your success and that you need to get rid of them. Whatever fee they are paying, it's not worth giving up your future success. The time, energy, and confidence these people take from you are the same time, energy, and confidence you need to catapult your practice. There are lots and lots of energy-draining tasks that we face daily, including prospecting, compliance, bookkeeping, prospecting, yes, it's on the list twice, and anything else you don't look forward to doing. If, on top of all of this, you still have a PETA client draining your energy and confidence, this already difficult task has become nearly impossible. The longer you allow these PETAs to sabotage your practice, the longer it will take you to achieve success if you ever get there at all. Freeloaders. While the damaging effects of PETAs are easy to spot, freeloading saboteurs often hide in plain sight. Thankfully, there's an easy way to detect them. As we did for PETAs, I want you to make a list of all your clients, but this time without their names. Instead, this list, sorted smallest to largest, needs to simply display their annual fee. This is best done in Excel as you'll need to run a couple of formulas. Here are the numbers we need. The 80-20 rule. How much of your revenue is coming from the top 20% of your clients and what percentage of your clients are generating 80% of your revenue? Average revenue per client. This is simply averaging all your clients. Target revenue per client. For now, let's use $6,500, which with 150 clients would give you roughly 1 million in annual revenue. All right, time to face the truth. What do these cold, hard numbers say to you? For most advisors, just looking at this spreadsheet paints a really clear picture of who is paying for your practice and who is freeloading. Rule breakers. While these people often take the form of PETAs, they can sometimes be very nice people who pay your fees, but for whatever reason refuse to follow your advice. This failure to follow your advice can take lots of forms, including failing to provide tax returns annually, failing to get correct estate documents, failing to buy the insurance you recommended, making emotional decisions in the top or the bottom of the market cycle, being non-responsive to your calls or emails, over-distributing from accounts, failing to save enough to meet financial goals, and any other activity contrary to your recommendations that will potentially have significant negative impacts on their finances. But Matthew, you might argue, it's their money and it's their choice. That is correct. We cannot force clients to follow our advice, but a client who does not follow your advice is not really a client. They're a walking time bomb. At some point, their failure to follow your advice will result in significant financial problems and you will be left holding the bag. Three lenses for taking action. I get it. It's hard to fire a client. Not only does it always suck to be the bad guy, but even at the pinnacle of success, there's always that lingering fear that no new clients will ever replace them. 
These feelings don't make you bad at business. They make you human. You're only bad at business if you let them get the better of you. Because we are humans and not machines, I want to offer you three lenses that will prompt you to take action. Lens number one, you can never make it up in volume. If your average annual client revenue is $1,000, you will never make it to a highly profitable, hyper-efficient lifestyle practice. Why? Because at this average, you would need 1,000 clients to get to 1 million in revenue, but serving 1,000 clients would likely require a team of 10 people, thus no profits. If this lens motivates you to take action, awesome. Anyone who is less than half your target average revenue, or worse yet, less than half your average client revenue, gets graduated today. Lens number two, you are stealing from your best clients. This lens comes from my friend, former coach, and former business partner, Stephanie Bogan. She explains, I want you to imagine hosting a client appreciation event where every single one of your clients attends. As is tradition at these events, each one of your clients has hanging from their neck a professional-looking name tag. On the name tags of your highest-paying clients, let's say the top 20% who are likely paying 80% of your revenue, you add a large gold star. Once everyone has eaten and had a few drinks, you get their attention and propose a toast. Not to you and not to your clients in general, but rather a toast to those clients who have gold stars on their name tags and whose fees are not just paying for everyone's dinner, but also paying for everyone else to get the same level of service as the gold star clients, just at a much lower price. I love watching Stephanie use this in front of large groups of advisors, because when she gets to the end, a groan can be heard across the room. Why? Because it's true, your top clients are unknowingly subsidizing your bottom clients. Put bluntly, anytime you discount your fees or allow someone to stay a client who is paying discounted fees, you are essentially stealing from your best clients. An oversimplification? Maybe, but if it's the motivation you need to graduate freeloaders, then let's go with it. Lens number three, you are stealing from your family. Anytime I found myself tempted to discount fees or anytime I hesitated to fire a freeloader client, I imagined myself calling my family to explain that I couldn't take them to the park tonight and that we had to skip our vacation next month because I would rather give someone a discount on my fees. While I never actually made this call, I would keep a picture of my family on my desk and in my conference room so that when I was too weak to hold to my fee schedule, I could take strength from the shame of having to tell my family. Again, probably not a healthy approach and not something I'm proud to share, but it gave me the motivation to charge full price, which ultimately got me where I am today. Whatever lens empowers you to take action, awesome. By the end of this week, either fire these clients or offer them an opportunity to pay your new minimum fee. But you may be thinking, but Matthew, I can't afford to fill in the blank. Well, in 2008 and 2009, I fired 200 freeloader clients and it laid the foundation for catapulting my practice to success. While I can't promise you'll be a success overnight, I can promise that you will never be a success if you hang on to freeloader clients. But Matthew, you might be thinking, these people need my help. Look, Business is business and charity is charity. If you want to do pro bono financial planning, that's awesome, but don't do it at your office. Partner with your FPA chapter or some other community organization to offer pro bono financial planning on certain days of the month at a location other than your office. At the end of the day, these rule breaker clients are in fact PETAs, but we can handle them with just a little more grace. When clients fail to follow your advice, Channel your inner Jocko Willick by taking extreme ownership for your inability to effectively communicate to the client why they should follow your advice. The script, letting PETAs down gently. For clients who just won't stick to the program, it's time to show them the door. Try this. Mrs. Client, I insist on only doing my best work, and I can only do my best work if you follow my recommendations. If you're unable to follow my recommendations, I will, with great sadness, need to resign from your account. How would you like to proceed from here? 
I hope you've enjoyed this snippet from Deliver Massive Value, the Financial Advisor's Guide. If you want to listen to the rest of the book, you can go to Amazon.com to buy the Audible, or you can visit my website, MatthewJarvis.com, to download the first two chapters as a PDF, to buy the paperback version, which I'd be glad to sign for you, or to download a PDF version of the entire book. So that's MatthewJarvis.com or Amazon.com if you want the Kindle or Audible version. Happy planning. Hold on before we go Something that you need to know This isn't tax, legal, or investment advice That isn't our intent Information designed to change lives Financial planning can make you thrive Start today, don't think twice Be a better husband, father, mother, and wife <laughs>